Welcome to World War II Chronicles, a weekly tribute to America's fighting men and women in commemoration of the Second World War. These programs are narrated by Ed Herlihy and are based on the news broadcasts of the war period from the recorded sound collection of the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Within Stalingrad, the Russians declare they have halted nearly a dozen Nazi attacks in the northern factory sector. Apparently, the Germans realize that their drive against Stalingrad is stalled, and the Russians seem convinced that their armies have already beaten off the worst that Hitler can throw at them this year. Winter is settling over several sectors, and in other regions, the autumn rains have made it difficult for the Nazis to bring up men and supplies. On November 19th, as the Soviet army was taking control of the fighting within Stalingrad, a Russian counteroffensive was also being launched to the north of the city. Marshal Timoshenko's counteroffensive, 60 to 70 miles northwest of Stalingrad, is making steady progress southward, and five more enemy strongholds have been captured. The following day, the Red Army attacked to the south of Stalingrad. Their aim was a bold and dramatic one, to encircle the German forces inside the very city which the Germans themselves were encircling. Within a week, the German 6th Army in Stalingrad, under the command of General Paulus, was in danger of being cut off. The two pincer arms above and below Stalingrad are advancing as much as 25 miles a day. The threat to the 300,000 Axis troops in Stalingrad itself has increased. Their corridor of escape is closing fast. Paulus's request to evacuate was dismissed by Hitler. The general was to turn his position into Fortress Stalingrad. Hitler promised him the encircled army would be supplied through the air. The German army trapped on the open plain between the Don and the Volga must be exterminated. This could take a short time if the Germans were inclined to surrender. But Germans rarely surrender as long as they have food, ammunition, and shelter. But that's exactly what they will not have on the bleak steppes. If the Germans could supply this army by transport plane, they could, conceivably, pull through. But Germany's great weakness lies in our overworked air force. Of the promised 500 tons of supplies a day, the Luftwaffe delivered only 80. A German army was left to freeze in a barren wasteland. I'm Ed Herlihy. Join me next time for World War II Chronicles. World War II Chronicles was produced by the American Veterans Center and Radio America in cooperation with the National Archives. To listen to more episodes, subscribe on iTunes or visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org. We need your help to keep the legacy of our World War II generation alive. Visit AmericanVeteransCenter.org to make a donation to support World War II Chronicles and the ongoing work of the American Veterans Center.